What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to basketball. What are we on now? Day four of NBA free agency, I believe. Uh, obviously, the moves are starting to slow down a little bit. This might be my last like day-to-day -day coverage of it, unless something more interesting happens. We might start to move into grades after this, but there were a couple moves today that I wanted to talk about that I think are actually pretty impactful, even just beyond like an X's and O's standpoint. But yeah, let's talk about them. But hey, right before we get into that, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment. I've responded to every single comment on my YouTube channel up to this point, and I intend to keep on doing so. But just remember, if you guys are ever like rude or disrespectful to other people or just not being collaborative in the comments, I'm going to hit you with an objection. And if you continue to be a problem, I'm just going to hide you from the channel. But anyway, let's get into the video. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, we try to go in like pretty much chronological order for just kind of the story building purposes of it. And I, I really don't think that there's any move that isn't worth talking about in these videos. I mean, all of these guys can play some sort of a role, and all of these things are thought out in some capacity right and we start off with Damian Lee for this first one obviously Damian Lee coming off injuries and stuff like that in what in his healthy like state Damian Lee not a bad three and D player at the end of the day so honestly you throw him on the Suns makes some sense right uh, obviously he's got some experience with his teammates and everything already at this point um considering that the Suns only have minimum contracts to give out at the end of the day Damian Lee makes sense to bring back presuming that he's healthy and they would obviously know the state of that uh the Suns have already made a couple like nice moves between Monte Morris and then Mason Plumley being uh, another one for them. They they drafted Ryan Dunn after moving back and acquiring some more assets and stuff, which I thought that was a really underrated move. So the Suns, Suns going in the right direction right now. This is a move that I think is a little bit bigger of a deal than people realize, and that's that Joe Ingles is going to get a one-year deal to go to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, obviously, Joe Ingles has experience with guys like Rudy Gobert, Mike Conley, stuff like that. We all know him as a three-point shooter that can put the ball on the floor a little bit. He loves to be in pick-and-roll situations, uh, more of a vet at this point. But Joe Ingles is an example of a front office that knows what the hell it's doing right now. So think about the Minnesota Timberwolves, right? Um, a team that has like some older guys on the team but at the end of the day there's a young guy in the team in Ant Edwards and they just brought in a couple other more younger guys onto this team right and Rob Dillingham and uh, Terrence Shannon Jr. right they're bringing in these guys they're trying to take themselves to the next level and how do they do that they continue to bring in like a veteran presence that like for those of you that don't know Joe Ingles is known as one of the better locker room guys in the NBA just a really good leader on most teams so like bringing in these types of guys to help uh, hold the accountability of all the younger guys on the team or even just the stars on the team, right? Just having another like respected voice in the locker room, I just think is so critical. And obviously this guy can still get on the court and help a team. Like at the end of the day, he can, like he can put the ball on the floor a little bit. It's not going to be anything crazy, but it's, it's effective nonetheless. And obviously he's an elite shooter. The Timberwolves need a little bit more shooting. Not sure how many minutes we're actually going to see from Jingling Joe at the end of the day, but I, I just think this is a really underrated move. This is just an example of a front office that knows what it's doing and it's building the correct culture like the things that Joe Ingles could talk about this season could be something that resonate with guys like Ant Edwards for the rest of his career or something like that so don't don't sleep on little moves like this the, these types of things are huge for culture building Another sneaky good move here, Alec Burke's one-year deal with the Miami Heat. I don't know exactly what the details of this is. They make it sound like it's a minimum because I'm pretty sure that's all Miami can give them. I think Alec Burks is unfortunately one of those guys that's kind of going to miss out on some of these middle-level contracts because teams are stuck in like the second apron or above the luxury tax and stuff like that, and they don't want to pay some of these middle-level guys. But man, like Alec Burks is just solid wherever he goes. Um, mostly it's the offense, right? Obviously, dude's one of those guys that's just a pure bucket getter. If you put him on the court, for 20 minutes he's gonna get you 12 13 points somehow like that's just what he does i guarantee you he's gonna be in the big three in a couple of years torching people and then one day he is gonna be an absolute menace at ymcas because his game is just like ageless like it's just like i get to my spots i hit open shots like i just go get buckets like he just puts the ball in the hoop it's not even him like getting to the rack or anything he's just like a jump shot hitter and that's what i i've just loved eric alec burks for so long so the heat just adding like more guys that can put the ball in the hoop like that's great He's got a little bit of size to him, obviously. So that's a that's a really good pickup by Miami. Timberwolves again here with PJ Dozier. This was kind of an interesting one. I was like, oh yeah, PJ Dozier. I was like, yeah, what the hell happened to him? Um, injuries have plagued his entire career, right? I don't think PJ Dozier's ever played more than 50 games or maybe 60. I don't know. No, I, I think I want to say it was like 50 or something like that. I could check it right now, but I'm not going to do that. Um, PJ Dozier's never been an effective basketball player. Like you've kind of looked at him and you see this interesting like 6'6 athletic build and everything, but obviously his body's kind of been failing him. Um, he's been in Europe and everything trying to get back it sounds like a team's going to give him a chance 
why why not right he's a younger body and everything i mean if he ends up becoming like some sort of a three and d type player for them then great right then that's awesome then it's a wonderful steal from the timberwolves um another name that i'm surprised we haven't seen somebody pick up on yet is like mario hazonia overseas y'all remember him an orlando magic pick from back in the day um honestly mario hazonia one of those people that because i have people ask me all the time they're like who's someone where you've done like a draft eval of someone and you like completely muffed it up mario hazonia i thought mario Zonia was going to be tough like I really didn't honestly like I still see a lot of the good skills and we're starting to see it in Europe now where he's just like torching people most nights I'm kind of surprised he, like we haven't seen him make like an NBA comeback yet but that's that's just me there's been some interesting like trade rumors around like both Buddy Heald and Lowry Markin and I've been kind of seeing both of those things being floated around floated around today I don't really want to talk about like rumors like too much I personally would be kind of surprised if Utah moved Lowry Markin it just doesn't seem like something that they really want to do I'm sure they're taking the calls and everything well we know they're taking the calls like most every team takes the calls at the end of the day but uh i just i don't see them getting moved buddy healed in a sign and trade would be kind of interesting obviously the warriors don't have a ton of assets to give up at this point but you don't have to really for these sign and trade type things why did buddy healed not work in philly like i can't comprehend that for the life of me like they made the trade didn't seem to really want to play him or anything like buddy Heald's a good basketball player man he's a really good basketball player uh throw him in in the warrior system you might just get um um, bohemian um buddy for this one man you, you just might like because man like if you just gave him the spacing and everything you got guys like curry that are playing around him too and bring a lot of gravity like like buddy heel to hit his shots man moving or just straight up like dude can stroke that thing so like man I, I, I'd really like to see Buddy Heald end up on this team. I'm just curious to see what type of team the Warriors put together at the end of the day as they kind of try to squeeze whatever they can out of these last couple Curry years. Obviously, LeBron got like his max contract and everything. It doesn't seem like they're going to be able to get anybody else. So LeBron gets a max contract. What else is new? And they also said that his son's going to be in the G League. Yeah. No shit, right? Um, I, I am really excited about the development of Bronny. I think he's a really interesting talent. But yeah, no, no surprises here whatsoever. Torian Prince, a nice little pickup for the Milwaukee Bucks. So Torian Prince, solid 3 and D players, got a lot of size, can switch and guard forwards, which is really, really nice. Uh, usually plays with a lot of confidence, which is good for these championship teams. You need guys that are not going to be phased. He's played with a lot of great players up to this point, and he's just going to keep bouncing around from those teams. So shout out Torian Prince, man, um, especially because of that time he, he explained to the reporter what a rebound was at at the end of the day um that was hilarious to me I, I wish more people could do that when i was um when i was in coaching and stuff we had to go through media training like something stupid and i always would just be like can i just please tell some of these people to just like shut the fuck up in all honesty because I'm, I'm not gonna lie i just don't have patience for like media stuff i just feel like they ask dumb questions a lot of the time they're like oh like oh wait why do you think you guys like lost tonight and i'm like well dude I, I got a whole fucking list of that shit like like you really want to sit here and like listen to all of that because like i could tell you like i'm pissed off at this dude i'm pissed off at this dude he didn't do his job tonight but i'm not allowed to say shit like that i have to be like oh no we weren't like joint in like our team effort tonight and i could give you a whole answer to it but it doesn't matter at the end of the day but yeah that's kind of it for today it's a pretty light day all said and done so i think i might get go on to like some grading videos where we go through and grade them but i honestly want to hear from you guys i'm, I'm not i'm not going to do a video for the fourth tomorrow or anything but like are do you guys want to see grades on free agency because like here's the thing I, I haven't really seen like a bad move yet like I haven't seen one where I'm like F like that's a bad move I I genuinely think the GMs are doing like a crazy good job this offseason and that's just because of like the I, I don't know if that's this is the reason why but I, I'm more so just commenting on this like the way that free agency is like structured now is really awesome to me like I love how this is set up how there's not just like a bunch of people moving at all times I know that's maybe more exciting for some people but this this brings me back to being like a kid and how free agency works and I just think it's better for the game to have people kind of stick around in places just a little bit more um, obviously we've had some crazy movements still like there will be every year but I don't know I just I think this is better but you guys let me know like do you guys want to see grading videos because I feel like it could get a little repetitive and me kind of talking about stuff that I've already talked about and I don't think there's going to be a lot of like hit and miss things but please uh, leave me a comment if that's something you do want to see and I'll happily deliver it to you guys so thanks as always you go you guys and we'll talk to y'all later bye